gather here, we celebrate a life, a life that uh, lived uh, to the glory of God, and 
Sherry Ravine, Sherry, uh, she lit up the room when she walked in, into it. You knew she was there. She made sure of that. From her cackle laugh to her smile to just making sure she knew everybody in the room. And today we celebrate her life. And I thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to be here. The family thanks you too. And when we think about it, um, we'll talk a little later about it, but Sherry's really been out of the loop for the last 10 years. So a lot of the people that she touched are no longer in the area, or maybe have already gone to their heavenly home too. And so um, thank you for being here this morning as we celebrate the life of Sherry, born in Miami on October 14th in the year 1948. To Alfred and Gloria Brown, she joined the church triumphant on November 7th, 2022. And we're here to worship God because it's appropriate to worship Him even on the occasion of death. Because He sets out the limits in which life is to be lived. And then He promises eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. And if, G if Sherry was here, Jesus was here. That's just where she is. And Jesus is in this place now. Amen. And he's, he is the one who unites us yeah. and leads us and brings us together as a family today. Yeah. We also remember before God a true servant leader. That's what she was. She was a servant leader. A caregiver, an evangelist, encourager, and even more. Who lived each and every day her faith in the way she touched other people's lives and the way she cared for her family and her friends. And lastly, we come to comfort each other and to support this family. To you, Alfreda, the faithful sister, the bold sister, her daughters, Sabrina and Erica, and I know that what you meant to her, her grandchildren, and Timothy was on the plane and sat on the tarmac for an hour and a half, but the plane couldn't get the ice and he never got out of New York. And so Timothy is not able to be here. And Timothy, I hope you're listening. We were hope we got connected to you and uh, so you can be a part of the service. He put the slideshow together and a little later uh, he had to send a message that we'll be watching. And then Jared, all the way from South Korea now, there you are, as you serve your country and and Charnel with their boys and enough and their nephew Al Alfred and Six great grandchildren, Cairo, Caden, Amara, Amari, William, and Maddie, and other family and friends. So it said the Lord comforts the, us not to make us comfortable, but to make us comforters. And that is something Sherry did while able. She made sure everybody was comfortable and taken care of. She had that gift of hospitality. And may we do the same to each other today as we gather here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, and in holy baptism, share me, Laverne, Brown, and Rush, already died to sin, and was born into eternal life. Do you not know that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? And we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so too we may live a new life. And if we've been united with him like this in the truth, we will all certainly be united with him in his resurrection. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that you will also live with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Our opening song is How Great Thou Art.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And we pray, Almighty and gracious God, in whom we live and move and have our being. We present ourselves before you as a people stunned by a sudden loss, seeking the counsel of your truth, the strength of your presence, and the guidance of your wisdom. And we specially present ourselves in this place to give honor to the memory of Sherry. We've traveled to this place from many different locations, by many different routes, from a variety of experiences as numerous as our own individual journeys. We're not used to being together under these circumstances. And most of us are not used to being in this place. And it's all the more our prayer that you, O oh God, will unite us in heart and mind and spirit for this little while, that our lives might be touched by the promise of your life as it has been revealed to us through Jesus Christ. If emotions well up on us, accept our tears as tokens for our love for sharing. And with those tears, release from us a burdensome grief until at last we might truly celebrate your life. And then, O oh God, by your Spirit, strengthen us in the service of your realm, that at the last we might be truly worthy to bear your name and experience the fullness of your grace, together with all the saints who from their labors rest. In Jesus' name, amen. The 23rd Psalm is a powerful psalm, and is a powerful psalm, but Sherry loved this psalm. She was one of the Lord's sheep. And together, let's speak this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And God and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in my house of the Lord forever. We receive it for our soul. 
in Psalm 100 by Sabrina. Second reading will be done by Eric. I'll be reading from Galatians 6, verses 9 through 10. And let us now be weary and well doing, for in due season we shall reap the faith. As we have opportunity, therefore, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let the Lord have blessed to the reading and hearing of this book. Amen. And then the words from John. Chapter 14, beginning with verse 1, where Jesus speaks to us words that we need to hear today. And he says very clearly, do not let your hearts be troubled. Will you believe in God? Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms, and if that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We join our voices as we sing blessed assurance.
Savior all the day long. Let's pray. Gracious and heavenly Lord, we thank you for the gift of sharing, for the lives that she touched, for what she meant to both her family and this congregation. May we find comfort in your words and promise and hope this day as you take our grief and sorrow and turn it into rejoicing. In Jesus' name, amen. I remember the first day I met Sherry. I bet you all remember those first the first time you met her too. Well, I had met her here at the school. She walked in with two boys under her arms, Timothy and Jared. On that day, she asked some questions, and before I knew it, she enrolled the kids into our school, and then she enrolled too. Because if she the boys were here, she was going to be here, period. And she was. Instantly getting involved in the church and the school. She said, this is my boy's school. This is going to be my boy's church, and I'm a part of it. And she bought in from day one. And the teachers, every teacher that had her, even so over there, she, met, she was your school. And after school, she was always in your rooms, talking and sharing and doing something, because sometimes I wondered if she even had a job, because she was here so much. She was always hanging out with the teachers. She was on every uh, sporting event, wasn't she, guys? Cheering on because she wanted to make sure that uh, the people knew she was there. And if these doors were open, Cheryl Bean Rush was here, period. One day we gave her her own key, and she was here by herself a lot of times because I just couldn't keep up with her. <laughs> Holy Cross truly was her home. It truly was her home for, for some weeks. She was more involved and was here more than I was. She would be here Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. And then she would say, Pastor, we got to have something going on Friday night. And she would plan something. And then Saturday all day she was around with something. And then Sunday morning, here she was again. That was Sherry. She took the new member class more than anybody in the history of this church. <laughs> she went through it more than 20 times. I stopped counting at 20. <laughs> Why? Because she wanted to get to know everybody as they joined the church. And secondly, I don't think she liked to cook and she liked the food we were serving. <laughs> <laughs> she was instrumental in helping us get started many different programs, including the Alpha program. She served in every capacity and, and board the church ever had, and she even dropped up some positions, I think. And I remember one day telling her, Sherry, take those boys and go home. They need another place besides Holy Cross, because they lived here constantly, too. I have to say that she was one of my best friends. And every time there was a need, she was the first one to volunteer, the first one to serve, and the first one to do it with joy. That's how she became president of this congregation, the first woman president, because no man would step up. She said, heck with you. Let me do it. <laughs> she did a good job. She got involved in the district in LWL and wherever there was a place, and then around the district she was going for all the other churches. Who is that little spitfire? Or who is that? Uh, where's that laugh? What always stood out was her deep faith, the gift of hospitality. Her relationship with God was lived out in her relationship with others, inviting and welcoming and being Christ to those who encountered her. She was always smiling. She had this infectious laugh. It was, I always called it kind of like a cackle. And I thought that's how she got her nickname, Chick, only I found out last night it wasn't that they were from Uncle. Uncle who? Bernard. Bernard, okay, and Chick was sitting on his on his uh, knee, and, and 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 Alfred was on his other leg or foot, and he called him Chicken Fifi. <laughs> but she lived up to that name because I grew up on a farm, and I knew a lot. We had a lot of chickens, and chickens do one thing: a mother hen protects her babies. And when trouble comes, the mother hen raises her wings. And those chicks get under and she comes down and covers over them. 
But blow if one of those chicks doesn't listen, and if he survives the danger whatever game, that mother hen goes after him and picks him until he bleeds, and the next time she literally raises her wings, then the first one's there. I saw her do that with Jared and, and Tim when they sometimes when they misbehave, she could lay into you, couldn't she? <laughs> it wasn't just them, she laid into you guys too. <laughs> no. Erwin's being honest at least. She was a, a hen to mother hen. She protected her property. She protected the Lord's business. She protected everyone. And she loved her family, church, and personal family, and nobody better mess with them. On Sunday afternoons, she would say, okay, I gotta go get food for Pop, or food for Dad, and, and the way they could go, or if there was a pot like here, she'd take food to them afterwards. <laughs> and I would laugh at her driving. I swear the car drove itself. Because she would sit in that seat and you couldn't see her. She looked through the steering wheel when she was driving it. And everybody would stop and look because they thought the car was driving itself. I remember her and Alfreda planning family reunions. And how back in the day, my father-in-law, Pastor Kruger, and then we'd be talking about family reunions in the Alder Guild room back here because they all were on the Alder Guild at the same time. And they would tease each other and, and whose family was bigger and whose family was better. And finally, Pastor Kruger says, I'm just going to go to your family reunion. <laughs> and she said, come on. And so he actually filled out the whole registration but we'd never send it in. <laughs> and, and she was always scheming participating and encouraging. So why are we here? Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a, and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. For Sherry and you, her family members, the last several years have been very challenging. In fact, it's, we were talking about it last night, it was almost 10 years that she's been fighting this disease of Alzheimer's or dementia. And it's a cruel disease. A person who's struck with Alzheimer's or dementia suffers from both physical and mental losses. Family members can feel rather helpless at times as they see their loved ones suffering from these losses. Family members observe how their loved ones change as, as Alzheimer's or dementia takes its course and robs them of their faculties. So they no longer are the person that they once were. They can forget so much, even times, the names of the family members as well as their own names. Past memories of their family history and their own life story disappears. Their mind becomes more and more like fog, unable to think clearly. And you to the family lived through that these past years, but you were there. They're totally dependent on others. And when death does come, it may be mixed with both sadness and a sense of relief. She's now where she belongs. And that is our hope for sharing. As people of faith with trust in those wonderful words of the 23rd Psalm that we read before, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Notice that death is not a permanent existence. Rather, God, our loving shepherd, walks us through death's valley, and we don't stay in that valley of death forever. As people of faith, we don't have to be afraid of death because God, our shepherd, is with us. And if God is with us, then we can face anything in life, including death. So it is that we can affirm the truth of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 today, that God puts order in our lives and it's through time. 
Because God is a God of comfort and not a God of chaos. And that is why God created a time for everything and everyone in life. And there are stages in life that each one of us lives through. That's why for Sherry, there was a time to be born. For Sherry, there was a time for her to be a child. There was a time to grow as a teenager, a time to become an adult. There was a time for Sherry to go to school, and to, a time to leave school and go to work, and she was in chemistry, and she was a brilliant mind. And a time to meet and to marry, a time to have children, Sabrina and Erica, a time to raise them. And there were many times for Sherry to serve the Lord and Savior in the church, a time to raise her grandchildren, a time to lead and serve and share the love of Jesus. Sherry also spent time singing praises and smiling at others and being kind and friendly towards them and offering up help to them, living her life to glorify God, and she loved to sing. Praise gospel choir and regular choir, and she loved all of them. You could hear her leading the hymns. As time passed, it was a time for Sherry to be afflicted with Alzheimer's disease, a time to suffer, and a time to leave this life, which leads us to another truth of our faith that takes us beyond time, beyond death, and it's into eternity. So for Sherry, Alzheimer's disease, disease is not the last word, nor does it have the ultimate victory over her. No, rather, thanks be to God that Jesus, through his death on the cross and his resurrection, has ultimately defeated Alzheimer's and all other powers that were against God. And while her dementia may have robbed her of many things, her faith was not for nothing and separate us from the love of God. That's what Romans 8 says. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Sherry truly loved her Lord. And for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that we might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified, and he truly called charity. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave up us all, how will he not also, among, along with him, graciously give us all things? And who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written? For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep in the slop to be slaughtered. And here it is. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Those are the words of promise today for us and for Sherry. And we are grateful for her life, for her love, beyond our feelings of sorrow, our feelings of gratefulness for having known her, for having experienced her kindness, her love, her her servant heart, and her funniness. I remember, and Alfred and I were talking about it, I did your mom's funeral, did your dad's funeral, and now I'm doing Sherry's funeral. But I remember the first funeral, your mom's funeral, it was at St. Mary's. Some of you might have been there. It was a big, big service. And I was one of five pastors that day. And Sherry afterwards came up to me and she said, Pastor, and you have to picture that on the stage or on the platform, two black pastors, then came this white dude, and two more <laughs> black pastors. I'm sitting right in the middle, and she said, Pastor, you were a great Oriole today. <laughs> I'll never forget that. separates us from the love of God, even if you're an Oriole. And we are reminded that nothing, not even Alzheimer's, can 
he separated her from her Lord and Savior because she knew she was loved and she was embraced by the God of heaven and earth. A love that calls across dark intervals of meaning, reaches into the depths of human despair, embraces even those who live in the shadow of death. So while we may not have felt as though Sherry was, some of you may have felt that Sherry was slowly being taken away, that we were being robbed of the gifts and presents here with us. But Paul assures us to the exact opposite, opposite. That while, yes, these things happen to us during our pilgrimage in this world, God is at work creating a new. And that none of these things, not even death itself, shall separate us from the love and the power of the resurrection. Paul is the first letter of the Corinthians. He says, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sin? It's for death, dementia, memory loss, all these things have been swallowed up by Christ Jesus that we remember and make no more. I close with one last story because we know how Sherry loved to eat. <laughs> and even in these last days, that was one thing she still could do. And I, she heard me tell this story once and she said, please tell it at my funeral. So that's what I'm going to do. A woman was diagnosed with a terminal illness and given three months to live. She asked her pastor to come to her home to discuss her final wishes. She told him which song she wanted sung at her funeral and which scripture she wanted read and which outfit she wanted to be buried in. And then she said, one more thing. I want to be buried with a fork in my hand. There was a fork in the casket to you. You didn't see it, though, but I put one in there today. <laughs> in all my years of attending church socials and potlucks, I always remember that when the dishes of the main course were being cleared, someone would inevitably say to everyone, keep your fork. It was my favorite time of dinner because I knew something better was coming, like beveled deep chocolate cake or deep dish apple pie, something wonderful. So I want people to see me with that in my cap, see that, see the fork in my hand in the casket and wonder what's that fork for? And then I wanted to tell you to tell them, keep your fork because the best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. And she is there now, celebrating, singing with those that have gone before her and remembering everything and everybody and having a blast. We're still here, we got a pilgrimage to go. But let's not give up, because the best is yet to come for us, too. And in the meantime, we got a lot of sharing of who Jesus is and sharing the message of his love and salvation and something that this world so desperately, desperately needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us join our voices as we, as we sing it as well.
Times of remembrance. Time of remembrance. We all have stories of sharing, and that time is going to continue in our meal afterwards down at the auditorium. Please take that time and uh, share during that time with the family some stories because they probably don't know some of the stories we know. I'm sure they don't. I would love to hear them. And since Tim couldn't be here today, he has some memory that he, he wants to share with everybody. So here's Tim. Share feeding the burn brown rush. Also known as Sherry, Chick, Miss Rush, Auntie, Gotti Chicky, Mommy, Grammy, and most memorably the life of any room she found her way into. Grammy was a brilliant woman. As a kid, I remember bragging about her being some type of mad scientist because I didn't understand fully what a chemistry major or family <coughs> analyst was. I just knew she was brilliant and she knew science. And I knew that any question I had, whether it seemed absurd or, or even within the realms of our logic, if I brought it to her sincerely, she would <coughs> she would truly listen and try to figure it out with me. And if she couldn't figure it out with me, then she would tell me to go look it up. Because that was something she really <coughs> was education. She taught so many people. Truly, I can't even just say kids, because she would do uh, new member classes at Holy Cross, as well as just uh, subbing from the school. She loved to share knowledge, and she loved to share her love of God. Everything that she did, it seemed as if her soundtrack in life was onward Christian soldier. She, she would always go marching into war, no matter what. The fact that she's gone, it's hard to deal with. But knowing that where she is now, she's marching, marching strong and singing praises. So I just want to say thank you to her for making so many of us the people we are today. And uh, I want to say thank you to you all for loving her back. Let us stand. God has made us his people through baptism and through Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of the last day. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. The courage to change the things we can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. Have mercy, O God, on the Cherubim's family and friends, that by your tender ministries they may draw day by day on your strength until at last each of them realizes their healing power and our, their grief is relieved. We give thanks for Sherry and all that she has been to all assembled. 
as a sister, a mother, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, an aunt, a servant leader, a teacher, a neighbor, a co-worker, a giver of joy, and the list goes on. We especially thank you for her helpfulness and love and direction that she would give when physical or spiritual ills beset anyone. For abundant love even in the face of adversity and her willingness to often look beyond problems to solutions. We are thankful for support of family and friends and caregivers who helped over these past years as she dealt with that disease called Alzheimer's. And today we thank you for you, Lord Jesus, and celebrate the victory that you won for her on the cross. O oh God, whose only Son, Jesus Christ, died a terrible death. You know the full anguish of human suffering and loneliness. It's never your intention that a person should die. And even as you share the, the nightmare of our grief, gently awaken us to a new Easter dawn of resurrection and hope and life. And then together with Sherry and all who sleep in you and all who wait for you on earth, we shall rejoice in your eternal salvation given to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Grant us grace to entrust, share, mean, Laverne, Brown, Rush to your never failing love, which sustained her in this life. Acknowledge me, help me beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sin of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to your favor you bear for your people. Yes. God of grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. And we give you thanks because of his death, Jesus destroyed, the, by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. That neither life nor death nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God the Father who has created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. And together we pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The celebration of life continues, and if you go through the glass doors and proceed down the long hallway to our auditorium, there's a nice meal waiting for all of you, and may it be a time of fellowship and sharing uh, the stories that we have of sharing and let's pray for that food right now. Lord Jesus, you always provide. And once again, you provide for the nourishment of our bodies. And as we come to share the stories of Sherry made around food and fellowship, just strengthen us, Lord, in the process so that that story may ever be true, that you are Lord of all. Bless this food in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. And we close with our final hymn. God be with you.